Let's do a quick and simple video today. We're going to take a look at a Niagara system that emits from a skeletal mesh. It's a simple thing, but it can result in some really neat looking end results. It's a simple process, but it can look really, really cool. So let's take a look at my uh, third person character, which is just my character that I use uh, for my own game. And ignore all of the extra stuff that's in here. It's just a character blueprint like you have yourself probably and we're going to start by adding a niagara particle system do make sure that it is a child component of the actual character's mesh because this way the moment we put in a niagara system that has a skeletal mesh location set up it will just use whatever skeletal mesh it is parented to so it automatically picks up on what it should do. So that way you can make one particle system that works on all of your skeletal meshes right away. And let's get started with making that particle system. So I have a very messy folder here. Uh, don't look at any of that. <laughs> and we're going to uh, make a Niagara system, a uh, new system from Emitter. I always like to use the fountain as a base for most of my materials or my particle systems rather and we'll call this one uh, fx skeletal mesh when we open this up we see the fountain uh, as the base that we uh, put in i'm going to just make this a little bit bigger so you can see uh, we'll remove the shape location i'm going to remove the velocity and the gravity force as well so we just spawn in one particle at one place and in the particle spawn we're going to use a skeletal mesh location uh, there's also a static mesh location which works more or less the same way uh, skeletal mesh has a couple more options a little bit more complicated so we're going to go over that but just be aware that if you want to do this on a static mesh you entirely can so let's add a skeletal mesh location and it still doesn't do anything because we don't have any uh, preview mesh assigned this will now just work on any mesh that you put it on, but in order for us to actually work on it, we're going to put in a preview mesh. And I'm just going to use my player character for that. And immediately you will see that it spawns in particles now on every single bone of the skeleton, which is not ideal. And it might also not quite do that for you. So what you want to do, make sure that you open up your skeleton mesh here. And somewhere in your asset details, there should be a checkbox saying allow CPU access. If you're just spawning from the bones, I don't think you need this, but we're going to be spawning from the mesh itself because that's what we want to do. And you're going to uh, need to set this enabled because the particle system uh, works on the CPU and the meshes don't. <laughs> the meshes get rendered uh, through uh, the GPU. So you need to tell the engine, hey, this mesh make it available for the cpu to look at so that it knows uh, at what location like all the vertices or all the faces are so it can actually spawn in particles on them so in the sampling method let's go from skeleton bones now up to uh, surface triangles you can either do vertices or triangles i like doing triangles and now you can see it starts looking a little bit more shaped like my character uh, in initialize particle, I'm going to uh, change a couple of things, make it a slightly shorter lived particle, and I'm going to make them a little bit smaller as well, and I'm going to be spawning a shitload more of them. So that is now looking like a night sky version of my character, more or less, which is kind of cool. And that is the basic uh, ID. So now if I uh, set that skeletal mesh uh, thing in there, you can see it starts spawning in in the blueprint as well. And if I now run the actual game, you will see that it spawns in those particles and they stay around in world space. So if we like do a jump, it, it kind of looks neat. Let's add a little bit of like curl noise force to it as well so that it moves around a little bit more. And just like that, we have something that looks a little bit more organic. Uh, this, of course, doesn't look great, <laughs> but it's just as a example. So now, that's all fine and dandy, but this is emitting throughout the entire mesh. And we maybe, probably actually, don't really want that. So the way we can change that is instead of um, triangle sampling for uh, all triangles, 
what we can do is we can say we only want to spawn in on the sampling regions. And if we set that to true, by default it doesn't do anything because we don't have any sampling regions set up. So let's go into our character mesh here. And if we instead look for sampling, we get a submenu here for sampling and we can set up some regions for that. So we can sample on either materials or on bones. And if you sample on a material, it will just make a selection of everything that is a certain material and use that as a region. You can also sample on bones and that will sample everything that is weight painted to the bones that you've selected and make that as a region. We're going to use a material for now because it's uh, a little bit easier. And here we can just select the materials uh, that we have available for us. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the bone. So that's only going to be those like little horn things that I have. And I will call this region uh, the horns. Now that I've made that, I can set up the sampling regions here in my Niagara system in the skeletal mesh location module. And once I add that, I get a drop down menu here with all the sampling regions that I've set up. So let's set up one for the horns. And now you can see it only is emitting those particles from the horns. And let's copy over this emitter and we'll make another sampling region uh, that is including like both of its hands. So let's make another region and this one we're going to filter by bone because I do want to show you some things. Uh, the bone name is going to be the arm right number three. And here we can say either include or excluded. So if we say excluded, it will be everything except these bones. If we include it, it will just be these bones. And if we apply to children, it will also include all of the children of that bone. So if I, for instance, took the arm uh, one, which is the top bit of the arm, it would also include everything down the chain up until the hand. We don't really want that at the moment, but that is a thing that you can do. So let's go add another bone here and we'll use the arm left 003 as well and then we'll call this um, one hands. In our second emitter here, we're going to not use the horns, we're going to be using the hands. And now we can see we're emitting from both the horns and the hands. Just to make that a slightly more visually interesting uh, difference, in initialize particle, I'm going to set the color for the hands to like a, let's do it like a purplish color. And now if we run the game, we can see we are emitting like probably way too many particles. <laughs> also, I've got two swords for some reason, don't mind that. Uh, we, we're emitting way too many particles, but we're emitting particles only from the horns and from the hands. And that is how you can set up particles to emit from a skeletal mesh. Once again, you can more or less do the same thing for static meshes. It's a lot more simple, but this is the basic idea of emitting for skeletal meshes. And you can do some really, really cool stuff with it. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 